Folks, the name of our program today is How to Screen Your Applicants Without Going to Federal Prison. My name is John Adams, and I've been dealing with tenant applications now for over 30 years. I have seen some major, major changes. First application I took, I guess, was in 1974. Yikes! That's 40 years ago. Uh, I was a, um, I was a uh, junior at uh, Emory College, and my brother and I bought 40 units of apartments out on Simpson Road, which those of you who know Simpson Road know that that is a challenging part of town. It is uh, very low income, and we were right next door to a, um, a, a, a HUD property where people could stay for free. And we were charging $69 a month for a two-bedroom brick apartment with heat and hardwood floors. $69.50 a month. And it was all we could do to get the rent in because these people would leave us, go next door, and they could stay for But all the time since then looming over me has been this fear that I would, um, Jenny, get out from under there. She doesn't want to. Okay. Uh, would, that I would inadvertently discriminate against someone and end up in federal prison. And then try to make it real clear to you that that's what can happen if you discriminate illegally. And I don't want to discriminate illegally. In fact, I want to discriminate legally. Do you remember when you step on an airplane and they choose the person with the most experience to fly the plane? Uh, that, that's discrimination in favor of experience, and I'm in favor of that. What is any discrimination that violates somebody's human rights or their civil rights? Um, and, and I think it's un-American, and I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm in favor of civil rights for all Americans. And I think everyone should be respected, and everyone should be treated the same, or, or at least have the same opportunity, okay? So, uh, and I think that goes for housing as well. I believe in fair housing. If somebody comes up to me and says, look, I want to rent your property, um, as long as they otherwise qualify, I don't care where they come from or what their accent is or if they speak English or what color they are, red, green, white, blue, polka dot, candy stripe, it doesn't matter. Your money green. Because if the money is green, then you and I can have a good, solid investment in a property that um, will help people and at the same time provide us with a nice income uh, for many years to come. And that's the bottom line. So let's get started here. Uh, first, I want you to know our presentation today is sponsored by the Department of Justice, the Federal Bureau of Prisons. No, it's not really, but that's just to shake you up a little bit and get you thinking in terms of why this is such an important 20 minutes we're going to spend together. I don't want you to be seeing this emblem every day on the shirt sleeve of the person who is feeding you, okay? Uh, this is Main Street at Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary. I don't know if you've ever been there or not. I have. Uh, it's off the coast of uh, California in San Francisco Bay, and let me tell you, it is cold there, and, and there are ghosts in that place. And it is weird, and it is not normal. And there were a bunch of crazy people out there. I mean, everybody from Al Capone to John Dillinger to all these other public enemies have been there. And I don't know, maybe they left their ghosts, but that's not where you want to end up, and it's not where I want to end up. So let's forge ahead. First, I want you to set your... Um, browser to full screen if you can do that. I happen to use Chrome, which means I click in the upper right hand corner, uh, those three horizontal bars down where it says zoom, I click on the far right button and it goes to full screen. And that gives you a little better viewing experience and takes advantage of some of the uh, technical things that we have available here. Uh, we don't have a handout today, so don't worry about that. If you'd like to send me an email privately, you may do so. Now, if you're watching the replay, this may not work. So don't be unhappy with me. Uh, just go to money99.com and click on contact, and you'll be able to send me a private email. But those of you watching live, you can click on that envelope right there, and it'll send me an email. 
and then finally hold on to your seats uh, because we're going to get started here. Now, here's the big picture. The law, a lawsuit of any nature can put you out of business fast. It's not something that's pleasant. I've been sued once in 40 years, one time, and it went on for five or six years. It was a pointless, frivolous lawsuit. It was designed primarily uh, to allow the, the tenant to not pay their rent uh, for the last several months of occupancy. And I wasn't even involved. The property was owned by a, a Georgia corporation that I had nothing to do with, and I was not the property manager. The corporation had hired a, a private property manager on St. Simons Island to handle the property, which is where I'm broadcasting to you from. But the point here is they found out that I had been involved in the property, and just for good measure, went ahead and sued me too. And I was on the hook for five years on this lawsuit. Um, it never went anywhere. It never got anywhere. We had a big deposition. But it almost put me out of business because every time I tried to borrow, you have to sign an affidavit that says you're not part of a lawsuit. Well, I was. I'm not willing to perjure myself. And so I had to say, yes, I am. Well, then they wanted to know all about it and blah, blah, blah. And so $10,000 later, the whole thing got dropped. I'm out 10,000 bucks, which is as much as they were seeking in the first place. I could have just written them on day one, written them a check for $10,000, had them go away, and everybody would have been happy. But no, no, it took five years of my life and $10,000. So it's no fun, and unfortunately it's happening more and more. Furthermore, really big lawsuits are the trend, and they can clean you out. I don't know how hard you've worked to build your net worth and for something for you and your family and your loved ones, maybe your church or, or educational institution, whatever it is you hope to help with your life, um, a really big lawsuit can really clean you out, and that's not what we want. In the best case, they can immobilize you, which, which basically means for a four to five year period, you're out of business. So. Uh, here's what we want to avoid, either a personal injury lawsuit or a civil rights lawsuit. These things are just no fun at all, and lawsuits can put you out of business. It may be a, uh, an investigation of application screening, which is what we're talking about today, or other issues, but it certainly can last for years. So what about insurance? Well, it may not cover you. I know you've got insurance. I do, too. But it's probably limited to $500,000. And if you think you have an umbrella, well, it may not cover you. I found out uh, about mine. Uh, and even if it does, it's likely limited to a million dollars. Trust me, the company is going to try to not pay. But you're saying, wait a minute, this is my insurance company. Well, as soon as you file a claim, they don't want to do business with you anymore. They'll say, well, yeah, but we don't owe for that. That's, that's really not our issue. You're going to have to do something else about that. So. I'm just telling you, I've been there, this is no fun. Uh, what about your business? Well, it costs nothing for these people to file against you. And if they find you, they're going to sue you. Uh, it may cover everything you own, and you can't sell anything, you can't finance anything during this time period. It is simply bad news. I'm looking for a pair of scissors here. Oh, yeah. Here we go, got it. And uh, it, it just can put you literally out of business in a very short period of time. So uh, this is not something that you want to get involved in unless you just have to. So let's talk about screening applicants legally because this is very, very important. You need to understand that the protected classes currently under federal and state law include race, creed, color, sex, place or, or gender, place of national origin, familial status, children, sexual orientation, veteran status, disability status, age, except for protected age group over 40, pregnancy, citizenship, and genetic information. And you heard me right. It is illegal to discriminate on the basis of citizenship. Now, 
I'm not going to argue with you on this. I, I know you may not have heard this before, but I'm telling you that there are attorneys who are bringing civil rights actions against, um, against landlords who are discriminating by requiring people to show proof of citizenship. And I don't, I don't, you know, whether you like it or not, it's none of my business. I'm just telling you it's happening. A genetic information. What in the heck is that? Well, I'm just telling you, that's the cutting edge now. And if you have gotten genetic information about somebody and you use that to discriminate against them, potentially that is a federal lawsuit waiting to happen. I know you're saying, I don't even know how that would happen. I'm just telling you, that's what people are talking about today. Now, here's the problem with somebody filing an application to live in your property. Let's say you have a house for rent. Let's say you run an ad on Craigslist and maybe one in the local paper or so. I don't know. You put a sign out front and you say, we're going to take applications Sunday afternoon and we'll be open from 1 to 4. And a bunch of people show up because it's a beautiful home. It's in a great location near Marta, blah, blah, blah. Price is right. And you get 10 applications. Now, you're going to have to decide between those 10 applicants as to which one you think is best for your property. And that's your job. But here's what I'm wanting you to know. Think about it. If you've got to turn down nine people, there's a very good chance that one of those nine people falls into a category that they may feel you are using to illegally exclude them. You can't win no matter what you do. There's no way for you to prove that you did not discriminate. The fact that you turned down someone who happens to be from Australia is de facto proof that you discriminate against people from Australia, which is against federal law. That's their place of national origin. They're from Australia. You don't like them, and so they got turned down. Now. The fact that they have no income, the fact that they were drunk and slapped you when they came in the door, the fact that they stank of garlic and, and, and cheap wine, that's beside the point. They're still from Australia. You turned them down. That proves you are a, a nationalist. Is that the right word? I don't know. That you, you are an anti-Australian. And you could theoretically go to federal prison for that. Not likely, but you could. And so you can't win. There's no way, if you're in the business of turning people down, and hopefully we are, then you can't win no matter what you do. And there are certain things you can do to make it less likely that this person is going to seek recourse or redress for their grievances. And there's really nothing we can do about their grievance because they got turned down for a house that somebody else got. Okay, So we're going to have to theoretically be able to prove in a court of law before an administrative law judge that we did not discriminate. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to show you the bouncing arrow here. There it is. You need a written screening policy that applies to everyone. And what I like to do is I like to hand that screening policy to the applicants as they walk in the door. And it says, here are the criteria that we use. Here is the credit reporting agency that we use. Here are the minimum standards that we have for all of our applicants for this property. And we will not select on the basis of first come, first serve. This is a fair housing opportunity. and. Uh, we will um, be submitting this to a credit reporting agency and we will follow their recommendation. Now that's about the best you can do. And it certainly sounds reasonable to me and I've talked with a number of attorneys who say, well, it's probably the best you can do. You need to treat everyone exactly the same. And I'm hoping that you are able to do that. I am. I think it's the American thing to do. I think it's the right thing to do. But whether you do or don't is not my concern. I'm trying to keep you out of federal prison. So even if you hate people from Australia, 
um, even if you just you don't like people from um, um, Canada, you just hate all Canadians. I they have a funny accent, eh? I, well, that's not good because everybody loves Canadians. But let, let's pick on Australia again. You don't like people there, New Zealand. There are hardly any people from New Zealand anyway, so let's pick on them. You just don't like people from New Zealand, okay? Never have, never will. That's your personal right, but you cannot be bring that prejudice into the rental decision. It's a violation of federal law, it's a violation of state law, and you are putting yourself, your property, and your net worth at risk. Don't do that. So treat everyone exactly the same, and here is my key to keeping you out of federal prison. Blame it on someone else. It's not your fault. If it was up to you, you would simply rent to the first qualified person that walked up. But the owners have insisted that we use this written screening policy <coughs> and that the written screening policy involve a credit reporting agency that goes beyond that and does their own screening and then makes a computerized recommendation based on the credit report and the information contained in the application. And that way, you're off the hook. See what I'm saying? If, if a machine does it, if a computer makes a decision, it theoretically is much more difficult for it to be discrimination. And that gets it off your shoulders. Now, let's see what we're talking about here. Um, the only solution, I believe, to screening applicants legally is to transfer the risk to someone who is prepared to handle that risk. Now, I'm not. I don't have a bank of attorneys. I don't want to spend a lot of time uh, dealing with attorneys. But let me tell you that there are three companies that have loads of attorneys, and they just are all day long ready to go to court. They are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. And these are the three credit repositories in this country that keep up with most people's credit reports. Now, as you know, Equifax is based here in Atlanta. I don't know where TransUnion is, but they have come up with a new product that I really like called MySmartMove.com. Now, I don't get any kickback. I, I'm not an affiliate of theirs. I probably should be. Margie, we ought to check on that. Um, but for right now, this is just my free recommendation to you. Go check them out. MySmartMove.com. Now, here's the deal. For only 30 bucks, you get a complete customized credit report. You get a criminal report that draws from millions of criminal records. And you have a right to know if a person applying for, to live in a house that you manage or own has a criminal record. That's valid. That's not a civil right, OK? And then it makes a leasing recommendation and a suggested deposit amount that you should take based on your criteria. See what I'm saying? You feed in ahead of time what is your risk tolerance on this property? What is your tolerance for a person being late? What is your tolerance for a personal tolerance for a person who may have minor criminal infractions? What is your tolerance for a variety of features? And based on your uh, criteria that you've supplied to TransUnion, the computer, not a human being, will look at all the data and come back and make a written leasing recommendation and a suggested deposit amount that you take based on your criteria. Now, do you see how this is extremely helpful to you? You've got a paper record showing that you couldn't have discriminated. And by the way, a single recommendation comes for multiple applicants. So if you've got uh, three uh, uh, friends who just want to live together, three gals who are, are friends and, uh, and they work together and they want to live together, that's fine. All three of those go into the recommendation even though you have multiple applicants. Now you're saying $30, that's a lot of money. I know how cheap you are. Well, here's the deal. Um, you can make them pay for it. And they don't deal with you, they deal directly with TransUnion and they're paying directly to TransUnion. They can't ask for a refund from you. You never had the money, and it's only $30. Now, 
Now they do have a $25 one. I don't recommend that because for five bucks more, you get so much more. If you want to split it with them 50-50, you can. If you'd prefer to pay it all yourself, you can. So you're in control here. But for example, if the person does not have email, they're not going to be able to do this. They're going to have to deal with TransUnion by email. And I don't think you want a tenant who doesn't do email, unless they're elderly and you can get somebody to help them then. But in any case, I'm just telling you this is a pretty neat uh, deal. So let's look real quickly, and we need to start wrapping up. Um, first, only take applications. And all of this, by the way, is in the Landlord Survival Guide. Only take applications that have a check for the earnest money. And the earnest money should be an amount similar to a full month's rent. And it ought to say right on it, earnest money. Okay? Earnest money. That's to show that they're earnest. Tell every applicant that there are probably going to be many applications. And that way, I know who you are. You say, oh, well, yeah, I'm sure this application will be fine. You build up their hopes, and then they're dashed. And that upsets them. Whereas if you say there are going to be many applications, you've already got their check for a first month's rent. You don't have to worry about them going somewhere else. But show them your written criteria. In fact, best would be to have them fill out an application and then sign that they received a copy of your written criteria. And I think you should have in the written criteria and that you should mention to them, it's not experience, it's TransUnion. Tell them that uh, you are going to be using TransUnion through MySmartMove.com to score their application and to make a leasing and deposit recommendation. And do you see how it takes you off the hook? If you will do this and document it, it's very important you be able to prove later that you made these statements and that you did, in fact, use MySmartMove.com. Next, follow the recommendation. If the, if the recommendation is to not rent to them, send a denial letter and their check back to them immediately. And we always mark the check void with a big black magic marker so nobody else can use it. And I take a photocopy of that check so nobody can say, well, my check got stolen and you're responsible. No, I marked it void. Nobody could have possibly used it. Finally, don't discriminate illegally. It's just, I, I don't care if you feel in your heart of hearts that Australians should not be coming to America. Um, I happen to like Mel Gibson movies, so I'm, and I like the kangaroo. Who was that other guy? Paul Hogan. What was he, a crocodile king or something? Cro crocodile Dundee. That was a good movie, Crocodile Dundee. The girl was pretty. Anyway, forget about that. If you don't like Australians, do not make that part of your um, uh, policy, your written policy. Okay? Treat everybody equally. And finally, use my killer lease. Why do lawsuits occur? It's because anger over their denied application. And I don't blame them. It's no fun to be turned down. I've been turned down. Anger is the issue. Let's get past that. Keep your applicants happy. Blame it on somebody else. Remember, you're just the property manager. And if that phrase doesn't make any sense to you, you instantly need to go to money99.com and buy the landlord's survival guide. It's only 129 bucks, and it's the best guaranteed investment you're going to make uh, this year, okay, it's tax deductible. You're just the property manager. You're not the decision maker, okay? Also, when people call you, especially applicants, return their calls and treat them with respect. I have found over the years, if I am businesslike, if I am respectful, and I blame it on somebody else, and I'm appreciative of their interest in our property, it minimizes the anger even if they're turned down. If they feel like they were treated with some degree of respect, you're going to get a lot farther. This, my friends, is your nightmare. We don't want to be behind bars uh, at the federal penitentiary in Atlanta. Um, and remember, your government is paying to prosecute you. The Department of Housing and Urban Development does pay for testers to just call you out of the blue when they see an ad and say, we are a husband and wife, I'm from Australia, she's from New Zealand, 
is that offensive to you? Well, they don't say that, but they know it would be to somebody. And if they catch you, then they turn you over to the Department of Justice who will prosecute you. Your own tax dollars are being used to prosecute you. There are civil penalties, which is probably what you'd encounter in all but the most severe cases. But in some cases, they do have criminal prosecution, and it can be a felony. So don't go there. Uh, finally, keep a log. And I apologize. I know I'm running over just a minute, but I'll be done in a second. Keep a written log. It must be a written or a recorded. It could be a voice recorded log. I prefer written. Nothing but a three ring binder with a page for each date that something happens. And on that date, you make a note of the time and what happened. Uh, Bob Johnson, applicant, called to check on his uh, application. I told him that he needed to contact, uh, that he'd been invited by MySmartMove.com, and he had not responded yet. See, the burden's not on you anymore. Make sure those entries are dated and timed, and they need to be what's called contemporaneous. And that's just a 50-cent word for meaning written down at the time it happens. Don't think you can go back six months, oh, I'll remember when that happened. You, do you remember what you did? six months ago today? I sure don't. So it needs to be plausible. In other words, it, it has to be believable. And I would encourage you to make a note for every interaction. If somebody calls to tell you that their plumbing is, is backed up, I'd make a note of it and say, agreed to send Mr. Johnson uh, a, a plumber to repair his stopped up drain within 24 hours and called him and notified him or whatever. Just write these things down because they really can help you later if you end up in court. So here's your call to action, and I'm going to let you go. Write this down. Number one, don't be the owner. If you are one of these people who says, I'm the owner and I make the decisions around here, you're going to end up in federal prison. Don't do that. Be the property manager. And if those two sentences, I'll highlight them here, so you need to be thinking about them. If don't be the owner and just be the property manager aren't making a lot of sense to you right now, you need the 2014 Landlord Survival Guide today. And you can get it today. I'm going to show you how in just a minute. Be responsive and consistent. And what that means is have a traditional business-like operation with your residents. You don't need to be their best friend, but you do need to treat them respectfully consistently and in a business-like manner. I recommend that you use MySmartMove.com. We've had good luck with it. And I also recommend that you document everything. And that's my presentation for today. Real quick, let me remind you that the all-new 2014 Landlord Survival Guide, I've got one right here. Here it is. You want to see this thing? It really looks good. Just got it back from the printer. How about that? The 2014 Landlord Survival Guide for Georgia, look at this. It's got an ISBN number on the back. That means you can order it on Amazon, but it costs more. Might as well order it from me. Um, it is, it is, this is the printed book, and right now you're going to get this. Now, in the future, you won't get the printed book. But So you need to go ahead and order right now while we still are giving away the printed book for free. You'll get the online book that has all the extra chapters, the online forms, the videos like this one, the monthly online hangouts that nobody sees except my landlord members. You get the changes and the updates on a daily basis. And $129 is for a one-year membership. So if you buy today, anything that happens between now and what is this, August 28, 2015, you get for free. It's all online now. Now this book, while it's got a lot of good stuff in it, including the killer lease, this is just a sample of what's online. We have already made some changes to the online killer lease that are not reflected in this book because you can't go back and change a printed book. But you can change the online forms, and of course they're all downloadable for you. $129. By using my forms and my strategies, I guarantee you're going to save at least one month's rent on your property every year. So what's a month's rent? $9.95? So you're too cheap to invest $129 tax deductible to get back $9.95. 
you don't make any sense to me, folks. We're, in this book, in, in the online version, we talk about advertising, repairs, how to do rehabs, how to use Craigslist, how to set up your telephones, how to set your rent, how to handle collections, and how to go after people that skip out on you, how to keep your records, how to handle your applications. All of that's in the Landlord Survival Guide and all aspects of managing your real estate for maximum cash flow. That's the key of the Landlord Survival Guide. And your best course of action is to use the Killer Lease and the Landlord Survival Guide in conjunction. Now the Killer Lease does come in the book, but the completely updated one is online and you get that free with your registration for $129 as well as your one year membership. So all of this good stuff comes with it. Uh, we have monthly member meetings, we have weekly office hours, so you can ask me questions. We have special guests, attorneys, uh, mortgage brokers, people like that. One year subscription, it's only $129, and you can order it right now online and get immediate access for only $129, okay? I got one more thing to offer you. If you'll order by midnight tonight, I'm going to give you a $39 special report called How to Avoid an Expensive Lawsuit. Now, I don't know what one hour of your attorney's time costs. Mine costs about $350. That's what, yeah, I'm not kidding. $350. I should have been an attorney, okay, and I'm not an attorney. But if my $39 special report called How to Avoid an Expensive Lawsuit keeps you out of one lawsuit, is that worth 39 bucks? Yes. Is it worth 129 bucks? Yes. Is it worth an hour of your attorney's time, 350 bucks? Yes. Is it worth one month's rent? Yes. So that comes free if you order by midnight tonight. You don't have to do anything. It'll happen automatically. You do need to order by midnight tonight, and you do it at money99.com. Now, this is one of your options right now. I especially like this guy right over here. He's sort of looking around thinking like, hmm, any good looking guys hanging around here? I don't know what this guy's doing. This guy looks good over here too. This is all kind of characters in here. Um, if you want to start wearing orange pants and an orange jumpsuit, suits me fine. Don't order this book. But if you prefer not to wear orange, my recommendation, folks, is to go ahead and buy this book right now. It's the money. 99.com, the 2014 Landlord Survival Guide for Georgia. Please go ahead and place your order. By the way, it's unconditionally guaranteed to be right for you. If for any reason it fails to meet your expectations or it's just, just not what you were looking for, hey folks, I'm an Eagle Scout. I'll buy it back, no questions asked. Thanks a million. I'm not going to be able to take questions because we exceeded 30 minutes and I promised I wouldn't do that, but you guys are the best. I will be back next Thursday, and we will take questions. In the meantime, if you want to, if you're watching live, you can send me an email right here. Uh, or if you're watching the recorded version, then you can go to money99.com while you're ordering your survival guide and click on contact. And there's a contact form for you to send me a short email there. Folks, thanks a million. I'll see you on the radio this Sunday. You guys have been great. Bye now.